Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'll be talking about today about a uh, integrated geological structural model uh, for Higginsville. And before we start, I want to acknowledge my co-author, Dr. Steve Bowden, uh, who is now General Manager Exploration Carora, and uh, he did uh, some of the work on this project um, as a principal consultant at CSI Global. Uh, the work was initially, um, we were initially engaged by Carora Resources to um, d do this geological model and develop some quality exploration targets. We thank uh, Corora Resources for engaging us in the first place and, of course, uh, for the permission to present to you today. So what are we talking about today? First, we'll uh, think about what the problem is and then uh, work uh, through what, what we actually uh, did. Um, talk about the introduction to the sleuth trend, the controls on gold mineralization at the Palu Gold Mine as a uh, type example. Um, then get on to the integrated geological model, interpret the model, and generate some drill targets. So the problem really is for us all, I guess, uh, and it becomes increasingly more uh, common, is that we are looking for new search space um, in order to have some exploration success. And of course, the new search space, in many cases, ends up being under younger cover. Um, it gets a bit worse when we uh, think about exploring under salt lakes, because the costs go straight up. Um, there is, in these terrains, then, of course, a, a, a dearth of uh, data. We haven't got enough data. We can't see an outcrop. We can't do any measurements. Uh, on it goes. We have with clearly a problem, and we have to somehow try and deal with it. Um, and, of course, the uh, costs in undercover exploration, as we all know, go straight through the roof. So out of that, um, we want to find a way to maximize, maximize our knowledge and improve the targeting, uh, target generation to a level that we know we have done the best we can in order to justify our targets and hopefully then end up with a better success right in the drilling. So our task in this case is to complete an integrated geological interpretation of the sleuth trend. Um, which is largely uh, on a salt lake and we want to use all the available data and want to work out the best, um, best targets we can. We'll use the Baloo open pit mine as a type example of the structural, structurally controlled or structurally hosted gold mineralization in the sleuth trend and build that into the model and then end up hopefully with some uh, targets for primary gold mineralization. In order to get there, uh, Carora provided us with a number of data sets, including the drill hole database, um, all sorts of geophysical data, gravity magnetics, all sorts of uh, geological interpretation files of previous workers in the sleuth trend, um, previous interpretations, and of course, uh, geochemistry files and a uh, mine model, leapfrog mine model for the Baloo gold mine. Um, to the right, oh, hang on. To the right we uh, have the, the, the sleuth trend and some of the, uh, and all of the previous drilling coverage, which is part of what we're going to use in the model. The, uh, Gold mineralization in the sleuth trend is a uh, orogenic type gold mineralization hosted in quartz veins and uh, it's quite frequently hosted along the sheared contacts between the Paringa basalt and uh, black flag sediments and volcanoclastic rocks. The dominant, oh, dominant shear zone is the Zuleika shear zone which pretty much uh, follows this uh, Paringa uh, black flag contact 
and the mineralization is housed at proximal uh, to the silica shear zone. So it's not uh, terribly new. We've got a, a big uh, transcrustal shear zone, and somewhere in the second, third order structures, we'll see the mineralization precipitated and hopefully forming uh, enough accumulations to be economic. Um, the workflow in the 3D model, um, we started off with interpreting the geophysical data sets, looking at uh, lithologies, uh, looking at structures, trying to set up the uh, larger scale model. Um, we went through a simplification of the geological grill uh, hole logging so that we can produce a coherent uh, lithological solid geology model, uh, build an inter interpreted structural framework to understand our structural controls, um, a simplified solid lithological model, then um, went back and um, used the drill, drill hole logging to build a regular and paleogenal model, and I'll come back to that, why that is actually quite interesting in the end. Um, do an interpretation of the uh, bottom of hole and down hole geochemical data, and lucky enough there were a uh, good, uh, good proportion of the drilling actually had a bottom of hole sample with a multi-element four acid uh, geochemistry which allowed us in the end to uh, do a principal component analysis and a lithogeochemical interpretation uh, of, of the lithologies. Integrate all these data sets into a single uh, 3D geological and structural model and interpret drill targets using the integrated model. The Blue Gold Mine, um, Steve did a, a fair bit of relogging of the diamond core, interpreted, in the, interpreted the 3D environment, used statistical correlations of structural measurements and vein types with gold mineralization, and out of that, uh, the conclusion was drawn that steeply east-dipping shears along the Black Flag Paringa contact are critical for mineralization, and north striking subvertical uh, shear veins are hosting most of the mineralization. The uh, 3D model was uh, uh, initially a regional scale model, which is the big one, and then we nested into it uh, six smaller uh, scale models, which allowed us to have more detail in the smaller models, um, which then uh, aided the interpretation on the local scale. Uh, the output uh, is um, the regional model, six detailed integrated lithostructural framework models and the regional paleochannel models. The important thing is that you can update these models as new data become available very, very quickly and new interpretations can be drawn um, as, as you go along. Here's a, type, uh, a screenshot of uh, part of the model. We can see the interpreted uh, structures, for example, the Sulaika um, or other uh, shear zones. We see the full uh, lithol solid geology model and, um, um, and that uh, allows us to go into, into the model at any, any point, um, section it, interpret it, um, and move on to the next part. We've done a, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've done the um, paleochannel model, and uh, that's basically the, uh, um, the surface for the bottom of the salt lake, and we can see quite nicely that we see the paleochannels developing. Um, there's mineralization in parts of the paleochannel, and we modeled that as well and it correlates pretty well with the previous interpretation of the gravity showing the paleo channels. Um, another screenshot of the paleo channels, um, just to show 
why it is actually an interesting game to play. Uh, reason being is the paleo channels as a starter follow previous weaknesses, structures in the basement. Um, we also see um, mineralization, so the background is uh, gold in the paleo channel model. And uh, uh, so we can worry, start worrying about where is the gold actually coming from in part to find other paleo channels, but more importantly, the secondary mineralization needs to come from somewhere, and that is the primary source we are after. Um, we uh, then interpreted the uh, bottom of hole multi element geochemistry, and that's just an example uh, with a principal component analysis where you basically investigate the correlation between all the elements uh, with respect to each other, and out of that, was a uh, particular principal component which was related to gold mineralization, and we can plot that uh, we can plot that um, as a grid, and there's a number of targets popping up which are interesting to to uh, investigate. Um, the whole model was all integrated. The different data sets initially interpreted. Uh, separately from each other and when we brought them back into the 3D environment and combined them all into one model we could investigate whether uh, different data sets and interpretations actually support each other or cancel each other out. Now in this case uh, you can see quite nicely there's a structural model um, and it's down in the monsoon area and the background is the, uh, the principal component two in this case, another gold uh, associated element association. And the gold uh, uh, principal component follows quite nicely uh, the structures as they were interpreted, um, as they were interpreted uh, from, from other data sets. Out of that, we can recognize that uh, probably these northeast trending structures are actually quite important in hosting at least part of the mineralization, and we can make a call as to where some interesting targets might be to um, follow up with the drilling. And these targets are now not only based on geochemistry, they are based on, on structures and in part um, utilized also the paleo channel interpretation. Um, we also can start worrying about uh, was our previous drilling actually effective or did we uh, miss some of, of the mineralization potentially and I'm just going to home in uh, on an uh, oblique model in this area. So we are looking uh, to the um, northeast and there was some holes drilled to the southeast and then a, a large number of drill holes drilled to the northwest. The mineralization is preferentially recorded in the holes drilled to the southeast, whereas the holes drilled to the northwest actually don't show much mineralization. Now that clearly is a call sign for have another look at this and uh, design some holes in a different orientation to try and work out whether we actually missed a great majority of the mineralization um, because we drilled potentially into the wrong direction. So that gets us uh, to some conclusions. Um, the exploration under cover for, simply because it's very cost intensive, requires that we maximize the understanding of all the existing data and we want to investigate this data against each other so we get more confidence into our interpretation. The data sets are initially interpreted separately so that we don't kid ourselves and then bring them together. The uh, data sets are integrated and validated. The modeling of the data sets in a 3D environment provides the ideal platform to assemble disparate data sets. Um, it allows us to go through all the data sets and interpret them together um, and the 3D targeting can be rapidly updated and reinterpreted as required. So most importantly, the study shows that um, we have encouraging exploration targets in the 
most cost-effective manner. And that's my talk for today. If there is any queries, my email is at the bottom here, and I'm happy to take any questions if there's time for that.